Exactly a year ago for my previous birthday, I bought a Prusa MK3S and it has been running great for the past year and I've made a ton of terrain. If you wanna see that original video, go ahead and click here and you can check out my unboxing and build and initial prints. But I have really liked the Prusa MK3S. I haven't had any problems with it in this past year. I've replaced the nozzle twice because of clogged nozzles, but other than that, it's been running great. So why did I decide to get the Creality Ender 5 as a secondary printer? Now, I will say my first printer, my FlashForge Finder, is out of commission right now. It has a clogged nozzle and I haven't uh, had a chance to fix it yet. Uh, but I did want a secondary printer that had the same build size as my Prusa MK3S. And this one that is half the cost, actually I got it on sale for $319. Was it a good deal? Should I have saved up a little bit more money and bought uh, another Prusa rather than this? Well, let's go ahead and check it out and see whether or not this was a good decision. So this is a little bit unusual because most people will buy the cheaper printer first as they are starting out in the hobby before getting a more expensive printer like the Prusa. But I sort of went backwards and I downgraded to a cheaper printer. And the reason for that is because one, I didn't want to spend another $800 for another Prusa, but two, as a secondary printer, I'm uh, only going to be printing out terrain for it. And so I was willing to sort of take a hit in the quality as long as I could pump out a lot of terrain pieces and effectively doubling my print speed by having another printer. And I know a lot of people do have the Ender 3, but I um, read a little bit more of the reviews and went ahead with the Ender 5 and spent another $100 basically to be able to build this within half an hour, which was I was able to do. It's very easy to build. Uh, compared to the Prusa MK3S, the version that I got, which was the kit, that took me a total of uh, nine hours to build, and this in contrast was super easy. Now having said that, I still spent a lot of time on this printer because it wasn't just plug and play. Uh, as you can see here, I added a lot more stuff to make this a working printer. So the first thing I did was when I ordered this uh, printer, I also got the glass top because I heard one of the most frustrating things that you can have with the Creality printers is not having a perfectly flat build surface. And so it comes with a magnetic surface, um, but I didn't use that at all and instead opted for a glass surface because I knew that that was gonna be flat at least. So right off the bat, I was using a glass surface. I'm very happy with it actually because as soon as it cools down, the pieces pop off really easily. I don't have to use glue to have any adherence on the build plate. Uh, it took a while for me to figure out uh, how low I needed the nozzle for that initial layer, but once I figured that out. So obviously, having a printer that is half the cost of my Prusa, uh, I'm gonna be giving up a lot of features. And probably the most notable one is that I have to level the bed almost every third print. And so I do that manually by uh, slipping a little piece of paper underneath the nozzle at the very beginning and adjusting it with these four knobs until I get the right height that I need. And I knew that that was gonna be the case. You can buy an add-on as a sensor, but I've seen mixed reviews about how well that works and it doesn't seem like a very easy process. Now, at the time that I purchased this Ender 5, the Ender 5 Pro was not available. And if it had been, I think I would have dropped the extra $70 to buy that instead, but it wasn't available. So I went ahead and just bought the regular Ender 5 and I made a lot of the upgrades that the Ender 5 Pro has, except for, for the motherboard. Probably the biggest disadvantage is that you have to level the bed quite often because this plate doesn't stay very consistent. So I've been doing that. It doesn't bug me too much, but it definitely doesn't have the same amount of ease that I have with my Prusa where I've never had to level the thing because it levels itself with every print. So that's been super easy. Some of the other features too that I had to contend with was basically inserting filament actually right up here. And as you can see, I, use, I mounted my block up top rather than uh, what's on the side and so uh, again 
Check down in the links below with all of the upgrades that I made with this machine. When I was down here on the side, it was such a pain to try to feed the filament into the little hole that goes into this tube. Now that's mounted on top, I don't have any problems doing that because I can actually see it. But again, that's another one of the quirks that I don't have to deal with with my Prusa at all. It's super easy for me to just put it in and it auto loads. I am using the Prusa slicer for slicing all of my models for this machine and that's been relatively easy. I've, I was already familiar with it so I decided to use that slicer instead and that's worked out fine. I've had no problems with that. I did have to adjust my settings because my initial prints I had a lot of stringing and you can see some of these images here where the stringing was pretty bad. Also one of the things that I noticed right away is that on some of the overhangs a lot of the filament sort of drooping down I thought that the issue was that there wasn't enough cooling because the cooling fan that goes underneath isn't very well directed. So I went ahead and printed out this mod that actually directs a flow of cooling air a little bit better. But after doing an equal print here on this piece, you can see that there still is some drooping of the print. It is a little bit better, so it is improved, but a bigger, factor in helping out uh, get rid of these drooping lines is I lowered my heat temperature for my nozzle. I was printing at 200 degrees and I lowered it to 195 and I noticed that that fixed a lot of the stringing as well as the drooping of the filament. And I did have to print out these stabilizers for the bed underneath to make sure that this far end wasn't dipping too low. The other modification that I did was to put on the adapter to go from a micro SD card to a regular SD card. The menu and control I think is fine. It doesn't scroll the name of the file. So if you have a long uh, file name, then you won't be able to read at all. Whereas on my Prusa, it does scroll the name across so that you can see uh, how long the print is gonna take. But at the end of the day, I think the question is, is what is the print quality like? Because really, when it comes down to it, I can live with all of that as long as the print quality is good. So let's go ahead and take a look at these uh, two ships. And this is from Dragon's Rest. If you didn't see my video about how to put these together and paint them, go ahead and click here. But this will give you a good sense of the print quality between the Prusa, which is over here, and this is painted. Uh, that's why it's a different color than this one and this one's just spray painted silver and from far away i don't think you can really notice much of a qualitative difference but once you look closer you can definitely see that the quality of the prints is different where the prusa mk3s is cleaner it's tighter there aren't as many flaws whereas when you take a look here at the ender 5 print you can see that there's drooping, like I mentioned before, but also these really strange, just random bits of plastic or random bits of PLA deposited here and there. And I'm not entirely sure what is causing that. Now, after I did some of my adjustments and I replaced my tube as well as the tube clamps, which I, everyone said that I needed to replace that as soon as possible, um, I did notice that these little random deposits have gone away. So maybe the tube wasn't uh, resting up against the nozzle all the way, which I hear is a common thing to happen with these machines. And that sort of makes it hard to do really precision prints. So for example, these pieces here with the engines actually are clipped together. I couldn't even use the clips because the prints were not precise enough to handle the, uh, and this was, for some reason only for the engine end. Uh, everywhere else the clips worked fine, but for some reason I think it was because these engine parts were printed with the hole for the clips uh, on the build plate. But I couldn't even use the clips at all because they wouldn't fit in there correctly, which wasn't a big deal because I was able to just super glue them. But um, that just sort of goes to show that the Ender 5 is not gonna be printing quite as precisely as the Prusa MK. 3S. And even here you can see that this door, which I was able to just snap right on with the Prusa print here, I can't even snap it on. So I'm going to have to file this down and make uh, jerry rig it so that it'll fit in here. So the big question I think is, 
Uh, do I regret buying an Ender 5 even though I saved a lot of money buying a cheaper machine? And it's hard to say. I feel like if I could do it all over again, I probably would save up more money and just buy another Prusa because of how low maintenance it is. But on the other hand, you know, even though the quality of the print is different, I don't mind having this as my secondary machine. If this was my primary machine, I think I would be frustrated with it. But because I already have the Prusa and I can select to have my most detailed prints on that machine, I can afford to just put other prints that I don't really care about that much on this machine over here. And as you can tell from far away, when you're playing a game, most people are not going to notice the difference between this print and this print. Most people are going to say, oh, that still looks awesome. Right? When you're playing a tabletop war game, they're going to just appreciate that you have a prop that's super cool like this. Right? And so at the end of the day, I think most people are pretty happy with their Ender machines. And you can get the Ender 3 Pro right now for $230. That is really cheap. And I think you can get good quality prints on it. If you change up the nozzle, you can print out little miniatures as well and not have to deal with resin. But at the end of the day, I think because of the fact that I have to level this bed so often, something that I got used to never having to do with my Prusa, and the fact that the print quality is not really as good as or precise as a Prusa MK3S, I will have to say that even though it's half the cost, I wish I would have gone with a second Prusa. Hopefully that's helpful for you. Definitely if you can afford it and if it's going to be your only filament printer, I would say it's worth it to dish out the extra money to buy the Prusa. But if you don't mind tinkering, if you don't mind upgrading, if you don't mind doing all of these adjustments on your machine and you want to save some money, then getting the Ender, either the Ender 3 or the Ender 5, I think is fantastic. And all of the upgrades that I made on this machine definitely did not cost another $70. Um, so. If you want to save even a little bit more money from buying the Pro version of the Ender 5 versus the regular version, as long as you're fine doing that yourself, uh, you're going to be okay buying the regular version. As long as you don't care about the motherboard, the, having the silent motherboard. So other than that, I'm going to have this machine uh, running all the time and will hopefully be able to double my production. Also, I just wanted to mention COVID-19. I did contact my local hospital asking them if they needed more masks or protective gear printed out. Um, they are not receiving that at this moment. Hopefully by having two machines, I'll be able to, once they start receiving those donations, I'll be able to uh, help out in that cause. Hit that like button and subscribe. Check out my Patreon page where we are gonna be giving away, don't worry, the better version uh, during this month of April, 2020. If it's past that, check out my Patreon page to see what is our current giveaway. Happy printing and we'll see you next time.